Our lighthouse was built in 1860. It was a major seacoast light, still is an active lighthouse today. Nowadays, lighthouses are automated, but for most of their history, including when we were built, they were manned by, actively manned by civilian keepers. And in 1860, the first five months of 1860, they get the bulk of the work done. They have to finish the entire lighthouse, get it ready to be put in service. They've got to build a house for the keepers to live in, uh, an oil house to store the fuel in for the lamps. Uh, incredible job that they did, all done by a civilian ship captain who worked for the U.S. Lighthouse Service called Captain York. The Jupiter Lighthouse was built before the American Civil War. Uh, it was darkened during the American Civil War by Confederate sympathizers, but that predated any of the pioneer settlers. It was a lonely federal outpost that would have rotating keepers that would come in and out. We have a lot of multi-layered history on this site. Uh, we have the light station is the very obvious thing, not just the lighthouse and the people living here up through the Coast Guard era, so potentially you have mo more modern Coast Guard keepers on top of earlier civilian keeper stuff. We have underlaying all of that the Native Americans, but then we had a weather bureau here, we had a naval radio station here, the Marines guarding the naval radio station, the Air Force personnel operating a tracking station, um, the, uh, the Coast Guard personnel living here that were not related to the lighthouse. So there's a lot of different kinds of history we can potentially find here. They had three lighthouse keepers here that lived in a house right on this site. And their job was maintenance and operations to make sure the light was on every night, to make sure the lens was rotating around. And then during the day, they've got to do all the maintenance and upkeep of the lighthouse, of the grounds, their homes, record keeping, supplies, and so forth. There was a keeper and two assistant keepers, and you're probably wondering, why did it take three people to operate a lighthouse? Well, of course, that light was not lit by electricity. They had to burn whale oil or lard oil, and someone had to carry buckets of that stuff uh, up 105 you know, narrow spiraling stairs 24 hours a day to keep that light going. And so they divided a 24-hour day into three eight-hour shifts, and thus a keeper and two assistant keepers. In fact, that is what brought my great-great-grandfather here. He needed a job. His last name was Pierce. And interestingly, the keeper that hired my great-great-grandfather, who was the longtime keeper, was named Captain Armour. And the other assistant that worked there with my great-great-grandfather, his last name was Carlin. And Carlin Beach Park in Jupiter is named after him. During the Civil War, uh, we had the inlet opened up enough that sailing ships could get in and out of it, and we're right across from the Bahamas. Florida was in the Confederacy. This area was pretty much uninhabited at the time, but with the uh, Indian River here, ships could come across from the Bahamas into the Jupiter Inlet or the Indian River Inlet, go up to where Titusville is today, ship over things over to the St. Johns River and connect to the rest of the Confederacy and the Union Navy was patrolling offshore, trying to catch those blockade runners once they got word that they were using these inlets. So during the war, the Confederacy disabled pretty much every lighthouse they could get their hands on. They knew that they would be more of an aid to the Union Navy than they would be to the Confederate blockade runners. So here, they left the lighthouse intact, and we've even, through more recent history research, we learned that the lens was probably left in the lighthouse during the war, not removed and buried as the story had long gone. They took away the lamp, the fuel, the supplies. They basically rendered the lighthouse inoperable. And the location was so remote, it just wasn't as important of a lighthouse as it was. The Union couldn't spare a company of men to guard it and put, keep it back in service and keep it safe.
the lighthouse service merges with the Coast Guard in 1939. They're here through World War II with extra personnel. We have a naval radio station here up through World War II uh, doing listening for German U-boats off in the Atlantic. Looking for German U-boats, which were submarines, German submarines, they were referred to as U-boats. They were patrolling the Atlantic coast of Florida, actually destroying tankers. We had a lot of shipping loss in the Gulf Stream, not even a mile off of our shore. And we didn't have the naval resources to combat it. All of our Navy was off in the Pacific, in the Atlantic, in the Mediterranean, somewhere else in the world. So it was left to the Coast Guard, uh, which didn't have the manpower. So they enlisted high school students like my father to walk the beach with binoculars. And their job, if they saw one of these U-boats who would normally surface at night when they wouldn't be seen, they had to uh, change the air out, uh, I think every 24 hours so they would surface at night. And most people don't know that World War II came to Palm Beach County. And then the Coast Guard remained active here really up until 2013 they officially started moving out uh, so they were living here for the lighthouse they were living here for the rescue stations in lake worth and fort pierce just as family housing they were living here for the loran station that was located up in uh, jonathan dickinson state park as a navigational aid life down here in the 50s this was a much smaller town at the time uh, drastic changes in Jupiter in the last 50 years. So even that part of our history and even the, some of the archeological things we find have a, a bit of uh, significance to them as well. We have two drawbridges here on corners of the site. We have the US-1 drawbridge over here, Carl and White Bridge, and then the bridge to South Jupiter Island, which is the properly the Wood Cato Bridge after the two lighthouse keeper families here. Uh, most people don't get to see drawbridges in operation up close. They're usually sitting up on top of them. The Cato Bridge uh, was really beloved for a long time because it was a one lane wooden swing bridge. Up until the 1940s when they got electricity, they actually had to hand crank to turn the bridge to get it open. The Coast Guard is there all the way to 2013 when they finally decide that without the Loran station or the needing to take care of the lighthouse anymore, they are able to uh, release the base and not, and not use it anymore. Now our historical society, the Loxahatchee River Historical Society, we formed back in the 1970s to preserve the Jupiter Cuesta Loxahatchee River area history. We provide visitor interpretation. We've grown with our museum and the size of our organization to get tens of thousands of visitors every year who come for the history and for, I like to say, the best view in Palm Beach County.